Yeah, again, uh, we'll give credit to Ohio State. Um, team very deserving of, of their ranking. Uh, but I'll also let you know I'm really proud of the team, really proud of our team and uh, those guys in that locker room. Proud not because we're close. That's not how we approach this thing. I'm proud that, uh, you know, we're never satisfied with the loss, obviously, but uh, what you saw today is us go blow to blow, blow for blow with the team that I consider to be one of the best in the country. And, you know, when I started this thing this week, the question I asked our team was, where were we? I saw a team take accountability for how we played the last couple of weeks. I saw a team that was disappointed. And to me, those are the type of signs that we need to have and, and the type of, that's the mentality we need to have as we work to take the next step. Um, I saw growth. You know, when people say, where's the growth? I saw that, uh, you know, point to today. You point to days like today. You point to games like Michigan. Um, and again, not because they're close, but how we competed against those teams. And to me, that's where when we talk about taking the next step in the growth, that's what those are the things that I'll show and talk to our team about as we finish up this uh, 2022 campaign. Obviously, we need to work harder and turn these into W's. When you play against the best, you can't expect them to help you. Uh, good teams don't need help. Today, we, you know, anytime we created some momentum, we give a big kickoff return. We create some momentum, we get a punt block. But the resiliency that this team has shown um, all year, except maybe a couple games, uh, was totally on display today. And that's where, my, that's where I'm proud of, of the way that we fought. Um, I still feel that the best is ahead for this football family, and we're going to finish this thing out the right way at home next week against Rutgers to send another group of seniors out here the right way and uh, continue to work hard to move the program forward in the right direction. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Mike, any initial updates on uh, Talia and uh, if you could also address the game he had, the, the way, the plays he was able to make and, and really bring it today? Yeah, you know, I'm hopeful. Um, it wasn't anything that happened structurally, I think, and I'm hoping that it's more like a, a, a bone bruise or a knee. He, his knee jammed into the turf on that play, so we're hopeful that it's just bruised. There was nothing um, structurally that happened. He didn't get hit a certain way or the knee didn't give out. It was more just a a direct contact down in the ground. Um, the way he played, you know, I was glad to see three. Uh, he looked like the old three today. Um, you know, he's taking a lot of stuff around here uh, with how he's played the last couple of games. As we talk about winning in the Big Ten in November, uh, we've got to build and develop this team to be able to play like we played today, but finish and win. Uh, I thought three played really well. I thought that he had that look. I know he went and he worked his tail off this week. You saw the competitive nature in him. He made plays in the air, threw the ball really well, made plays with his feet. He gave us a chance, and, and that's, what you, that's, what, that's all you can ask of your quarterback, and, and I'm proud of the way he fought as well as the rest of our team. You've mentioned that you think that Ohio State is one of the best teams in the country. I think most people would agree with you. How much did you use that in the fact that most people weren't giving you much of a chance going into the week as motivation? Uh, not a lot. Um, I, I think the motivation for us started within the accountability that this team took when, you know, the last two weeks we haven't played to our standard. And you know, as I told you last week, I felt like we got out toughed. Uh, we got punched in the mouth and didn't respond well. Uh, we got a team of, of competitors and, you know, I think how we played the last two weeks is indicative of the type of team that I think that I know we have. And so, you know, we weren't playing their ranking. We weren't playing the name on the front of the jersey or the tradition. We basically said we're playing their best 11 against our best 11. And all I want to see is how you compete in your individual battles against the best. Because, you know, that's why you come to Maryland to play these types of games. And I was proud of the way our best 11 competed. Wasn't always smart. Wasn't always exactly how we wanted. But at the end of the day, I thought we fought. And, and I'll be able to build on that as the leader of this thing. Um. On that, when you were down 10 and had the fourth and goal from the one, it looked like maybe the field goal unit was going to come out and Talia wanted to stay on the field. How, how did that decision play out? And then, um, I mean, what's the confidence you have in, well, in It having? wasn't necessarily about Talia. I mean, we needed two scores, a, a field goal or a touchdown. You know, the way our defense was playing, I felt good that if, you know, we had momentum, we had a good play called, 
that if we executed it, it gives us a chance. We were able to get it executed, maybe not as perfectly the way it was designed, but uh, he kept extending it with his feet and made a great play. But, you know, our, our defense was playing with confidence. Offensively, we moved the ball and, you know, we, we kind of buckled down in the red area earlier in the game. And I just thought, you know what, man? We, we, I told them that let's go try to take it. Don't play cautious. Don't go and, and get it close. So you know, I had to give show the confidence that I had in them, and, and they made play. They made plays. Mike, in terms of uh, the practice week going into the game, did you get any sense of different feel in practice to lead to this? And at what point during the game did you see the light on? You know, so. That's what you saw. First of all, welcome back, man. It's great to see you back here. Thank you. Um, as far as our work week, um, I, I, as I said, it, it started on Monday. You know, we kind of had a family meeting. You know, as I've said before, the day and age of a coach getting in front of kids and telling them, do this, do this, do that. I mean, we're all in partnerships with them now, and not that they, you know, run this team, but I think it's important as a leader to, to – I know why and thought I, – I understood why I thought we played the way we played the last two weeks, but I wanted to hear it from them. And when we had that family meeting on Monday, I liked what I saw because I saw a bunch of guys stand up and basically say, you know what, that's on me. That's on us. You can do – you can call what you want to call, Coach. It's our job to respond. It's our job to fight. It's our job to play with pride that we always talk about. And so I saw it early in the week. Did we have a perfect week of practice? No. We had, some, we had days where we went the right way. But what I told them is today, throw scheme out the window, throw, you know, fundamentals. Like, I want to literally see who's going to fight for four quarters. We're going to compete for four quarters and then complete the game. And then turn the scoreboard on and whatever the score says, it says. Because when you come in the locker room at the end of it, you know that you fought. And that, to me, is what I wanted to get out of a game like this. And I was proud of that from our team. Well, we meet every Monday, but normally it's me going through the turnover battle, the penalties. Well, this one was, I mean, I was up all weekend. We got back from Penn State, and it was really disappointing for me to see us get punched in the mouth and kind of take it. And it made me start to question. And so as I watched the tape and I saw it, I, was, I stayed here at the office all night. The next morning I met with Leah very early because I thought that he was not necessarily uh, in a good place. And so when I met with them, I wanted to hear what they thought. You know, I can get up and tell them what I think all day long, but I wanted to hear what they thought. And what I found out is a group of guys that have taken accountability because it's my job to lead this thing. And, and it obviously starts with me. But for them to partner with me and say, you know what, coach, this ain't on you guys. It's on us. It's our job to go out and play the way we're capable of playing. And I saw guys challenging each other. I saw guys having tough conversations. There wasn't any finger pointing. And I've been around here to see the finger pointing and, oh, it's this, it's that. But it was all about what can I do better. And to me, that's how we build on. That's what we'll build on. Uh, coach, Dante Demas, five catches, 67 yards. Just what, were, what are your initial thoughts on how he performed tonight? You know, Tay's a competitor. I know none of the receivers have been happy with the way the passing game has gone along the last couple of weeks. Uh, that's a group by nature that's very selfish and they want the ball. But just like the rest of our team, they understood that hey, there's certain things we have to do. Today, Leah was able to have time in the pocket. He was able to throw 50-50 balls where, you know, the old Dante was running by people. To the, the, the Dante right now is using his size as an advantage. Leah gave him 50-50 balls that he went up and made big catches. And as I told you guys, I mean, he's still recovering and getting better and better. And I still think, you know, with every game you'll see him get better and better. And I thought today uh, he's everyone knows he's a competitor. He's one of our true leaders of our team. But today, Leah gave him a chance. The O-line did a pretty good job early on of giving us the pocket we needed for the kid to make the throws, and Dante made his plays. Hey, Mike, uh, you guys talked during the week, you and both defensive players, about translating your second half success into the first half. You hold the second best offense in the country to only 10 points in the first half. What, what was behind that reversal this week? Well, I think the big thing is, is when we, we talked about, I said a week ago after the Penn State game, that we need to take a really hard look inside everybody, me, uh, our offensive coaches, D coaches. And one of the things we found is that in the third and fourth quarter, we've done a really good job with our adjustments. And a lot of the times it's because, you know what, we go back to our old base 
defenses. We know the things they like. And so what you saw today was us say, you know what, let's not worry about scheming these guys. And it goes back to what the philosophy was going into this game. This wasn't going to be a scheme game. This is going to be a mono e mono stand up and fight the guy in front of you and win your individual battles. And defensively today, they, those guys, they played desperate. I mean, they, they had nothing to lose. Our, our DBs challenged a, a, the, a really talented receiver group. And, and that's how we felt we needed to play to give ourselves a chance. Hey, how you doing, Coach? What's up, Josh? So, um, third quarter, you guys were outscored 17-0, but responded in the fourth quarter. Um, can you just talk about what changed and how did you see your offense responding? Well, I think the big thing is you, you saw the block punt, man. That Those those things are huge, huge momentum plays. Uh, we didn't get ourselves in the right protection there. Um, and, and it's my job to make sure we get the right protection. I mean, we had a chance, you know, to, to continue to change the field position and to give them a seven points like that, you know, that, that hurt. Um, obviously, I think what happened is our guys kept competing. We made the block uh, extra point to get two points back. Um, you know, our defense continued to play the way they, they are capable of playing. And then offensively, you know, Leah plays better when we play fast and we got into our, you know, being two scores down, we got into our mayday, which is our two minute style offense. And he, he made some plays and in the fourth quarter, you know, the goal was to get it to the fourth quarter and, and check, check their oil to see how they would react having to play a good a football game in the fourth quarter. And, you know, they made the plays they needed to make and we didn't. Coach, obviously you guys fall today. You've now played the Ohio States, the Penn States, the Michigans of the conference. At this point, if possible, how would you evaluate the gap between this program and, and the gap you've talked about between the top programs of this Big Ten? I mean, obviously with, it's about wins and losses, and it's not like about how close you are. Um, so we still got a ways to go. As I told our team, though, there's, just a, there's a small margin of error between the great teams and the, and the good teams in this league. And, you know, for us to take that next step, we've got to be able to take that step. And that step is finding a way to win a game like this, not be close, find a way to win. And we had opportunities today where, you know, if we make a play here or there, uh, you know, penalties on third and two where we give them first downs, uh, miscommunication on a couple things where we got to get off the field on defense and then on offense, you know, we, we had opportunities where we had you know, minus yardage on P and 10 plays, which put us in second and long, third and long, we don't operate great in that situation. So just staying on track uh, is what we need to do. So um, we've played two of the top teams in our league, Michigan and Ohio State. Um, we fought both of them. You know, I'm not into the close, but I like the way we competed. And so to me, you know, the fact that we fought against those teams, the fact that this team understands the accountability of doing what I need to do to take the next step, uh, I think we'll be able to grow with that. Mike, uh, <clears throat> Hayden had over 100 yards rushing in the second half after you guys really, you know, handcuffed them before intermission. What kind of thing, what was the difference? What was he able to? Missed tackles. Uh, missed tackles showed up in the second half. Um, you know, we, we had a couple plays where we lost our gaps or lost our leverage in our gaps. And, you know, they're a good team, man. And when you give them a kickoff return to the 50, you give them a blocked extra, a blocked uh, punt, and play with a short field, those, those things aren't conducive. But, you know, he's a good player. Um, our defense did a really good job in terms of competing. But, again, that's the difference. The missed tackles, uh, we got to make those plays. Thanks.